Welcome to McMaster University. This video is a general orientation video for the degree completion programs in the W. Booth School of Engineering Practice and Technology. If you're watching this video, that means that you are getting started on an interesting and exciting pathway in one of four areas. And they may be civil engineering infrastructure technology, manufacturing engineering technology, power and energy engineering technology or software engineering technology. So this video will give you some general advice on how to get started in your career here at McMaster. So the first thing I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about where you are in the university. Now I realize you may be sitting at home watching this video, but as a student in the W. Booth School, you are in the Faculty of Engineering. And the way the university is structured, there's a number of different faculties. There's the Faculty of Business, Faculty of Health Sciences. The Faculty of Engineering is one of those faculties. Inside the faculty, we have two schools. We have the School of Engineering and Applied Science, and we have the School of Engineering Practice and Technology. And you are in the undergraduate programs in the School of Engineering Practice and Technology. The degree completion programs, as you know, are something you go into after you've finished a three-year college diploma. But you should also know there are students that go into other types of bachelor in engineering technology degrees directly from high school. And those are the automotive and vehicle technology, process automation technology, and biotechnology. Oftentimes students who are in, say, civil or software say, hey, how come I can't take software engineering during the daytime? Well, it doesn't really exist as a daytime program. Uh, it is what we call the degree completion. And those degree completion programs offer you a great deal of flexibility. And with that comes a little bit of responsibility. And I'd like to give you some advice about how to um, be successful in this program. The first thing you need to realize is that the courses are not offered in a very prescribed way, the way that you may be familiar with in college. So you may have semester one, semester two, semester three, and here's all the courses you take in each of those semesters. It doesn't work that way in the degree completion programs. It's up to you to familiarize yourself with the course sequence flowchart for your particular program, to understand that you need to complete 17 technical courses, seven general technology or management courses. It's up to you to have a look at the timetables, figure out when the courses are offered, what courses fit in your timetable, what courses are you eligible to take depending on what the prerequisites are. So that's something that's different from college. You're really going to need to uh, take charge of your own course selection. And we have another instructional video I would encourage you to watch that's solely about choosing courses. So, so have a look at that video. Another thing you have to think about is how many courses should I take? And generally speaking, if you're working, we recommend maybe somewhere between one to three courses. I know some people that have very demanding jobs and really they take one course. Um, sometimes if you're working part-time, maybe you can take three courses or maybe two courses is right for you. But it's up to you to figure out uh, what the right time uh, right amount of courses are for a given term and it can change from term to term. If you're not working full-time you may be able to handle four, five, or even six courses a term. The courses themselves are offered weeknights from 6.30 to 9.30. Most of the courses are offered in the Engineering Technology Building and in addition to the weeknights we also have two times available on Saturday. So we have 9 till noon and 1 to 4 uh, are also class times uh, on the weekend. Um, another thing you really should need to do is familiarize yourself with the online resources that are available to you. The first one, and maybe the most important, is something called Avenue to Learn. And that's our uh, online learning management system. And you will have a certain uh, uh, course website, if you want to call it that, on Avenue to Learn for each of your courses. And I would encourage you to explore those courses. There is some uh, information available on McMaster's website about Avenue to Learn. I would encourage you to uh, explore that, but really I think you can 
uh, pretty much figure it out just by exploring it yourself. If you're taking online courses, I would also encourage you to familiarize yourself with WebEx because WebEx is the platform that we use for delivering our online courses. And of course, I'd also recommend that you check the Bachelor of Technology website. So probably where you found this video, you will also find other important and useful resources, things like timetables for upcoming terms. And that's something I would encourage you to have a look, look at and to even look ahead uh, a couple of terms to plan your course pathway. So in summary, make sure you look at those course sequence charts, identify what courses are prerequisites for other courses, look at the timetable, and plan your own pathway through your program. Some other general information I think that's important is related to communications. And communications is important in just about every aspect of life, but especially true for you as a student. You must learn and use your McMaster email. That is how we identify you are who you say you are. So please don't send emails to faculty and staff at McMaster from your Hotmail account or Gmail account. They could be emails from anyone. We don't really know. But to get into your McMaster email, you need to type in your Mac ID, something you need to learn, and your password. And, and when you do that, we know that if an email comes from your McMaster email, that that must be coming from you. So official communication with faculty and staff should be through your McMaster email. Please uh, start using it. Um, the other thing I'd recommend is to be professional in your communications. Uh, as a student, it's a good time to practice uh, the type of communication that you should be using in the workplace. So when you send an email to a professor or to a staff member, be polite, use sentences. Remember, it's not a text message. And um, uh, I can tell you, as also, also as an instructor, uh, any type of subjective judgment that goes into determining your final grades in a course will be positively or negatively influenced by how well you communicate, and let's say how professionally you communicate with those instructors. So please practice professional communications. Some other very general information that you should know is that uh, courses at McMaster's degree completion programs are offered three times a year. So courses happen in the fall, that's a September start, the winter, that's a January start, and the summer, uh, sometimes called spring summer, and that starts in May. So there are three separate times of the year where you can take courses. I'd also encourage you to explore McMaster's website uh, and search for something called sessional dates. That will tell you what the first day of class is. It will also tell you the drop and add deadline. That is the deadline where you can um, add courses or decide to take another course or change courses. And that deadline is usually about a week after the beginning of classes. Uh, it will also tell you when the midterm recess is going to be. Uh, it will tell you relevant holidays it will tell you um, uh, the last day to drop a course before you would automatically fail the course. That's an important one to know. So generally speaking, about two months into the term, it's possible for you to drop a course and then have a, a withdrawal on your transcript instead of an F. So if a course is not going that well or you've been busy and you feel you've taken on too much, um, keep an eye on that deadline. You can drop a course without getting a, a, a failure, um, provided to keep an eye on that, that deadline. The sessional dates also tell you the last day of class, and then of course when the exam period is. So um, I'd encourage you to have a look at those. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention too is academic standing. So here at McMaster we use a 12-point grading scale, and I would encourage you to familiarize yourself with that 12-point scale. You need to keep a 3.5 average on that 12-point scale in order to, to stay in good standing in the program. And that equates to about a 60% average. So um, you are evaluated in degree completion, you're evaluated twice a year. So in May and in August, your academic advisor will have a look at how well you're doing, 
calculate your average and decide whether or not you're a student in good standing or whether or not you have to go on some type of probation. So um, make sure you keep your average above 3.5% and you won't have to worry about that. Um, the other thing I would like to mention too, I mentioned academic advisor. Well, who are the people that run this program and who do you need to know? Uh, well, number one, the uh, faculty of engineering is run by someone called the dean. And hopefully you never get to meet the dean because if you do, maybe you're in some kind of trouble. Um, but the, the dean operates the whole faculty and he's a fairly busy guy. He divides up the management of the School of Engineering, Practice and Technology among uh, several other people. The most important is the director of the school. So uh, the director of the school has two associate directors, one in charge of undergraduate programs, one in charge of graduate programs. Um, the associate director in charge of undergraduate programs is the person that all of the degree completion program chairs report to. And the degree completion program chair is the person who uh, looks after hiring the instructors for the various courses, deciding what courses to offer, deciding even the content of those courses. So your program chair is a direct resource for you if you have questions about your program, course offerings, um, other types of general advice uh, in terms of what to take when your program chair is a good person. Your academic advisor is also a good person and you will receive emails from the academic advisor um, and that person can help you in, enroll in courses or help you for some reason if you are having trouble and the, the system won't let you on uh, to a course, you can contact your academic advisor. Another very important person is the program administrator. So the program administrator uh, works with all of the program chairs, helps to manage the instructors for the courses, uh, manages the number of seats available in different courses. So, um, so your program administrator, your academic advisor, and your program chair are all very important people to know. I'd also encourage you to get to know your instructor, and your instructor for each course is really one of the most important people that you'll be interacting with uh, in your academic career here. So in general, I think um, I'd also like to recommend that you watch some of the other instructional videos that we have for degree completion students. And lastly, I'd like to wish you uh, good luck and welcome again to McMaster University.